Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. You may have seen on a couple of my previous videos that I've been developing a high performance fuel injection system for the dune buggy project that I've been working on for some time. I've been putting that fuel injection system to the test, driving the dune buggy around and optimizing its performance. That being said though, I have not had an effective way to capture the experience of driving and testing the dune buggy. This is why I finally took the plunge and decided to invest in a GoPro Hero 9. So without further delay, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we get in this kit. Unzipping the zipper. And here it is, the contents of the kit. In this pouch on the top, it appears that we have the instructions for use as well as the SD card. This kit ships with a 64 gigabyte high-speed SD card that we can use for video capture. It may be desirable to upgrade this to a larger size in the future, but for our initial testing, 64 should be plenty. Instructions for connecting it to the smartphone, along with some decals and stickers, are provided on this card, and it appears they've also given a QR code to go to their website and subscribe to their uh, information and their feed. The Hero 9 comes with a USB Type-C adapter cable for connecting the camera to a computer or USB power bank to charge the battery. Speaking of batteries, the GoPro comes with two separate batteries. That way you always have a spare in case one runs down. A camera mount allows the GoPro to be attached effectively to any surface using a VHB sticky back camera mount device. This threaded attachment also assists in utilizing the camera mount apparatus. Now we can have a look at the camera itself. It comes with lens protection cover and screen protection cover already attached to ensure maximum quality and additionally is wrapped in a piece of what looks like paper to protect the outside of the camera against damage during shipping. The mount can be attached to the GoPro by dropping the two flaps from their hinged positions inserting them into the slots corresponding to these flaps on the mount, and finally, placing the threaded pin through and threading it into place in order to attach the camera to its mount. The kit additionally comes with a handheld mount for the camera, which can also be attached directly to the two flaps on the underside of the camera body. The handheld camera mount can be affixed to the camera in a similar fashion by lining up the flaps on the bottom of the camera with the grooves in the mount. A central pin can then be inserted through in order to secure the entire assembly together so that the camera remains sturdily fixed to the handheld mount. Once you've attached the camera to the handheld grip, you can also use the handheld grip as a tripod. By opening the three legs on the grip and extending the camera vertically, it can be placed on a table or other level surface and operated as a tripod just like any other. Before we operate the camera, we have to insert the battery and SD card. This can be done via the port on the side of the camera, which is gasketed to uh, prevent water intrusion. This port can be opened by grabbing the body of the camera and pulling down on the clip on the base of the port. The port will then swing open like a door, as you can see here, and the battery and SD card can be inserted. By inserting the battery and pressing down, it can be installed into the camera. Once you've removed the SD card from its packaging, it can be inserted next to the battery in the small slot, which is designated for the card. Gently insert the SD card, ensuring that it's inserted in the correct orientation, and you should be ready to start up the camera. Before we power up the camera, let's remove the protective coverings from the glass pieces. We'll start with the lens. Next, we'll uncover the front screen. And finally, we'll uncover the rear screen. To power up the camera, we'll press down the power button on the side. It'll beep and start up. And now we can see a display of what the camera can see. It's going to go through a brief boot up sequence here. And now we should be ready to start setting up the camera by selecting our language and other settings. If you'd prefer not to install the GoPro app on your smart device, or if your device doesn't support the GoPro app, you can simply opt out by clicking Skip Setup. Once you get to the main display interface, you'll be able to see a number of key metrics about the performance of the camera, including the amount of time left on the card, the battery state of charge, and the mode in which you are filming. 
By default, the camera films at 1080p and 60 frames per second, but this can be changed or increased to up to 5K or up to 240 frames per second. Additionally, it, the speed and some other settings, including image stabilization, can be configured, and by pressing the modes bu mode button on the side, photo mode, video mode, or time lapse mode can all be selected. Once the mode is selected, you can then operate the camera by pressing the record button at the top. It'll begin recording, and the total time recorded will be shown here. Additionally, the selfie mode screen will show what the camera sees, even while you are talking to the camera which is a great feature of the GoPro 9. It is important to note that the GoPro 9 ships with a relatively low state of charge on the battery. This is to preserve battery life during shipping and to prevent degradation of the batteries in storage. As a result, you will want to recharge the battery once you get the camera to a full state of charge before you do any serious filming. Let's go ahead and take the GoPro out for a drive to see how it performs as an action camera. One of the first things I was very impressed with on the GoPro Hero 9 was the wide-angle field of view. The field of view is huge. It gives you the entire landscape in front of the camera without sacrificing on overall image quality. I think they struck a good balance on the wide setting for action cam shots that don't look too overly fish-eyed. The camera does support a super wide setting which does get rather fish-eyed, but this is disabled by default. Another interesting side effect of the wide-angle view is it makes driving look way faster than it really is. It looks like the car is absolutely flying, but in reality it's only doing about 25 in this shot. Perhaps even more impressive than the field of view is the stabilization capabilities of the GoPro Hero 9. The GoPro here is just mounted to the roll bar of the dune buggy. It doesn't have any stabilization gimbals or anything else to stabilize the camera, and the car shakes quite a lot when the engine is pulling hard or when going over bumps and speed bumps. In spite of all of this, the image is incredibly stable, and this is not even with the enhanced image stabilization turned on. The GoPro is capable of exceptional image stabilization under a wide range of conditions and does this by default right out of the box, no post-processing required. Another awesome thing about the GoPro Hero 9 is that the lens doesn't have to be focused. It doesn't need to be focused manually or hunt for autofocus either. Virtually everything is within the focal plane at any significant distance from the front of the camera. Although it doesn't make for a great macro camera, almost every other type of videography and photography is within the capabilities of this lens and doesn't require any manual intervention. One of my favorite features of the GoPro that I honestly use way more frequently than I expected to is the time lapse feature. This allows the GoPro to take many still images over time and automatically stitch them together into a fast motion time-lapse video. I use this all the time when I'm working on drawn-out processes, such as wiring up this engine control module on the buggy, and it's really useful when you want to save memory and not have to post-process extremely large video files of real-time footage to produce time-lapse videos. Well, I have been thoroughly impressed with the performance of the GoPro Hero 9. It's done everything I need for an action camera and really has honestly become my favorite camera to use for any sort of video production content. It's so easy to use, it automatically sets the light levels, the white balance, and the focal plane without needing to be manually adjusted or set up, and it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. I'd recommend the GoPro Hero 9 to anyone who's looking for an action camera or general purpose video camera, and I would even recommend it over a DSLR for the price point and additionally for its ease of use. Really, this camera has performed excellently in pretty much every field that I've thrown at it, and it's been awesome for documenting this custom VW-based dune buggy build that I've been working on for the past few months. I'm really looking forward to producing more content with the GoPro, and you'll be seeing lots of its footage in upcoming videos that I'm producing on this channel. In any case, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and thanks for watching Dielectric Videos. I'll see you next time.